Today we're going to talk about the significance of a chemical reaction. So if you have a chemical reaction, hydrogen gas reacting with chlorine gas, Form hydro, hydrogen chloride gas. We can look at this in terms of molecules, moles, and mass. So we could say we have one molecule of hydrogen, one molecule of chlorine, and two molecules of HCl. We could talk about this in terms of moles, that we have one mole of hydrogen, one mole of chlorine, and two moles of HCl. So the coefficients in the front tell us how many moles we have. We could also talk about this in terms of mass. Um, we would have 2.016 grams of hydrogen, 70.90 grams of chlorine, and 72.92 grams of HCl. And if you notice the mass of the reactants, the total mass of the reactants equals the total mass of the products. What we're gonna look at now is writing and balancing chemical equations in terms of it being a game. So games have a goal, they have rules, and they have tips. So the goal of the game the first goal is to get the same number of atoms of each element in the reactant and the product side. The second goal is, um, we saw this in the significance of the chemical reaction, the mass of the reactants equal the mass of the product. So the second goal is to obey the law of conservation of mass. So when you play a game, there are rules to the game. The first rule is that equations must represent known facts. So equations must be written to show, you know, a combustion reaction or single displacement or synthesis or decomposition. It must make sense and represent known facts. The other rule, another rule of the game is that you must write correct formulas. If this is something that you struggle with, I would refer back to um, chapter 7.1 where we went over writing formulas. When you're balancing a chemical equation, you can only change or add coefficients. That's the number in front of the um, formula. Do not change, and again, I'm gonna underline not, do not change the subscripts for correctly written formulas. So if you're going through and you're, you're following the rules and you're following the tips I'm gonna go through, but you can't seem to get your equation to balance, I would go back and check your formulas. You probably have incorrectly written formulas. So it's very important for you to include states of matter 
with your formulas. So the abbreviations S is for solid, L is for liquid, AQ is for aqueous, and G is for gas. And those are written in parentheses as a subscript next to the formula. Rule number five, remember your diatomics. So um, at these, when they're by themselves, are diatomic, which means there are two of them. And these are also listed on the back of your periodic table. Iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen are diatomic when they're by themselves, not when you're writing a formula. You also want to remember the molecular elements. These are also listed on the back of your periodic table underneath the, dia underneath the diatomics. Um, it includes phosphorus, which there's four of them when it's phosphorus is by itself, and sulfur, which there's eight, S8, when it's by itself. And then you want to memorize the assigned common names from chapter 7.1. These were the ones for the acids like hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, nitric acid, um, ammonia. Those were all in chapter 7.1. So the seven rules are things you have to follow and you have to do. Now what I'm going to do is go through for tips for play. So when you're playing a game, um, it's usually helpful to have some tips from somebody who knows what they're doing. And so these are some tips that I find helpful when I balance chemical equations. And you'll see me model these in class as we um, go through. A lot of the tips it's better to, to see as we practice this week. So the first tip is to keep a tally. And so I'll show you how to keep a tally when we do the balancing equations in class, when we do our practice. Um, it helps because it's hard to keep track of all the different elements if you don't have some kind of tally written down. So it's, it can be overwhelming when you're trying to balance a chemical equation. You see, oh, I've got this hydrogen, I've got this copper, I've got this nitrogen. You need to just pick one type of atom and balance that. Don't try to balance everything at once. You have a tally, so you'll, you won't forget anything. The next tip when you're trying to decide what to balance first um, balance elements that appear only once on each side first. And kind of going with number three, it is my recommendation that you balance hydrogen and oxygen last. You'll see this especially in combustion reactions. Um, hydrogen and oxygen appear 
um, on the react or the product side twice or the product side twice. And so it's easier to wait and balance those last. So in the phenomena that we did, we had um, copper two nitrate plus iron and that nitrate, that NO3 is a polyatomic ion, it will also appear on the product side. And so if you have a chemical reaction where you have a polyatomic ion and it stays together as a unit on both the reactant side and the product side, you don't need to break that up. You can keep it together and balance it um, together as a single unit. It's less to keep track of, um, but it only works as appears on both sides. And we'll go through that and I'll show you how that works. And I'm going to go through the last tip I have. Um, when balancing chemical reactions, you usually balance by putting a coefficient, a whole number coefficient in front of a formula. But if you're working through a problem, a balancing problem, and you're like, oh, I could balance that with a half. I could put one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. Go ahead and do that. And then you multiply all the coefficients by two to get rid of the half. I find number six um, very useful in combustion reactions and usually some um, double displacement reactions also. So we will go through um, different examples and we'll work through the rules and we'll work through the tips and then you'll have practice to do and then we'll move on to um, predicting the products of an equation and the types of chemical reactions in this unit. If you have questions, please send me a message in Schoology, talk to me in class um, so that I can help you with anything you have questions on.